Hey guys, how's it going? It's Shinobi here, and that was a pretty awesome intro, huh? 936,000 crit for Execute. Ah, uh, and my character in that scene was only in some 397 PBE gear, some LFR gear, just a mixture of some mediocre gear. Nothing too crazy. My warrior was my alt for a while. He's now shaping up to be my main, because warriors look awesome in Missa Pandaria. Everybody knows the patch just came out today. I said this week I'd be releasing some guides on some classes and also in Diablo 3 classes as well too. So, links will be on the screen to connect you to those ones if they're done when you're watching this video. So first what I want to do is I want to go over ARM spec here. Now ARMS has been super popular for the longest time and we're gonna go over what exactly you get with ARMS now, what things kind of are different, and how that, how it's gonna play into everything. If you're looking at the spellbook, once you go into your specialization and you click arms you're automatically gonna learn this stuff If you don't know this already maybe you did maybe you watched some videos on beta or maybe you're in beta but that's pretty much how it goes is you automatically learn it as you're leveling up you don't have to go to a trainer you just automatically learn it now going in here we'll start from the very beginning battle shout as usual everybody knows this one one minute cooldown going down battle stance now the stances let's talk about those for a second because that plays a huge factor or a big factor but it's we're gonna see what's gonna happen with the stances I feel like they're not as you know simple as everybody thinks they are first off you have battle stance here three second cooldown and aggressive combat stance generates high rage from normal melee attacks now you do not gain rage from being hit while you're in battle stance so makes you think should I be using this on in PvP or whatever the case defensive it's just a tanking stance. This is just the same as before, a primary uh, tanking stance. And then Berserker, this one's this is where it gets a little bit different, a reckless combat stance. Now you generate some rage. Let's go down the target dummies. I want to show you the difference between both of those stances. Now you see, let's say it's level 80. It's not really a big deal. Uh, here we go. It's a raid one. Okay, so I'm in PvP gear. It's a raid one, so... Might not be the best example, but let's check it out. So when you swing with battle stance, you see that I got 12 rage. You're gonna get between 10 to 12 to, or 13 rage on a hit. Now I'm in I'm in PvP gear, so I'm gonna miss sometimes. But there's 13 right there, and there we go again. So that's gonna be battle stance. Now let's try berserker stance. Now berserker stance, you see right now I'm at 56. Swing again. So you get about six to seven or eight, six, seven or eight, depending on if they're crits or anything like that. And even if you do get a crit, it's not that much more. Let me see if we can get a crit over here on Berserker. So we're at 73 when we swing. Let's see if we can get a crit here. I just keep watching. So it's generally six, seven or eight you're gonna get from that, and that does play a big factor. Now that that makes you think. Now. Am I going? Let's get out of this area where people are like exploding stuff all over. Uh, I'm going to go to another safe area and just talk about some of this stuff. So, pretty much, it's kind of one of those things where without a lot of testing, we're not really going to know what the optimal thing is because it is a three second cooldown. It's not like you can just keep bouncing back and forth when you need to. So, that does play a big factor as well. See, it goes into the cooldown there. But the thing that I've come up with is that Battle Stance works really nicely in a lot of situations especially PvE where you're not taking damage so it's gonna be a no-brainer battle stances for PvE berserker stance would be something one of those things maybe that you would like put on just before like say you got into a, a duel with a rogue or something you would put that on right before the rogue got on you you build up rage well uh, he was beating on you and then you switch into battle stance when you start doing aggressive attacks so especially when you have things like stuns, when you know you're going to be able to attack them, you can have battle stance. So as far as macros go, I'm going to be working on macros, and I'll do a macros video as well as an add-ons video in the future. Now you see right here, I don't have any add-ons right now because they disabled all the stuff, and you got to get them all updated and stuff. Come in the future as well as the macros video. I only have a couple macros right now, but so as we were talking about, so that's pretty much stances. We have Berserker Rage, Charge, a lot of the similar stuff. Colossus Smash is amazing now. It's now like an attack. 
And your primary attacks are going to be down here. I have them listed right here. Colossus Smash is something you want to do every single time it's up. It's going to be very important. It's going to take away the armor on the mob or the person and let you do a lot of damage. Then Mortal Strike obviously is going to be as good as well. Now, the thing with Heroic Strike is that it's not as good anymore because you have Slam. And Slam doesn't have a cooldown. Or, and it doesn't have a cast time either, so you can just spam slam and it costs the same amount as Heroic Strike. But the thing is, with Heroic Strike, it says use when you have more rage than you can spend. Now the, the deal with that is that what I'm thinking about doing is making a macro that makes me do Heroic Strike and Mortal Strike at the same time. But that's only macro I use if I have like 80 or 90 rage or something like that. If I have a bunch of rage, that's like for like a burst macro type thing. So that's something you could do as well. Obviously still have the overpower. So these are going to pretty much be your main attacks. We saw a new ability here, Die by the Sword. I'll show you a demonstration. When you had that activated, your parry chance is 100% and your reduced damage taken by 20%. And you're probably asking yourself, like, oh, okay, well, if you're parrying, they can't do damage to you anyways, right? Well, you parry people that are in front of you. So if a rogue is behind you and you use this, I believe you're still going to take damage, but you're going to take 20% less damage. And it also helps versus casters as well. I think it's a cool ability, though, especially when it's only two-minute cooldown. Deadly Calm just got nerfed like crazy. It's... It's not. It's pretty much inner fire now, or inner focus, or whatever that ability was called. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but you enter in a battle stance, reducing the cost of your next heroic strike or cleave attacks by 10 rage. It's something that you pretty much macro into something, because it's not something you depend on, but something nice to have sometimes. So I would mac the, macro that into something just to make it a lot easier for PVE and PVP. Now with disarm, a lot all the abilities you don't need to have a stance anymore. So they're either going to be cooldowns or whatever the case. So disarm right here is one minute cooldown. No requirements, no defensive stance, nothing like that. And that's it. So I, I love that ability. I, I thought it was really frustrating to have to always be in a certain stance. And every one of my abilities had a macro on it. So it could switch to that stance that was accorded. It's just wasted time. Like, why do we need all that? Just give us a cooldown or just give us a rage requirement, you know? So, Dragon Roar, we'll talk about that in a second. It's one of the talents that I chose. Uh, rage Regeneration, that's the same thing. Heroic Leap, just pretty much the same stuff as before. Now let's get into the talents. Alright, so these are the talents that I chose for right now. Um, I'm going to tell you a lot of things that may help you out a lot in the future because right now we are level 85, right? So obviously you don't get Avatar, which is going to be the optimal choice um, when you do hit 90. But with a lot of testing, who knows? Bloodbath or Stormbolt might be a better choice. Still, needs a lot of testing. You can't just automatically assume something, you know, and just think that's the way it's going to be. So the first three here, I chose Juggernaut because... Charge every 12 seconds just is a lot better, especially if you're leveling up with this spec in Miss of Pandaria, which comes out on the 25th. Then you want to be able to charge more often. Uh, I mean, double time is nice for maybe grouping up mobs together, but maybe I would use this maybe in a Fury spec that was like an AoE spec. But as far as arms, I think Juggernaut's just the best choice. And Warbrainer is kind of like... It's got 3 seconds stun, which I understand that, but still 20 seconds for a charge, not a big fan of that, and 12 seconds I'd rather have that. But also Warbringer, I feel like there's going to be kind of like a stun type spec. There's going to be different variations of specs that are going to be coming out over time, and you're going to see it coming out soon. Because you have things like Warbringer and Shockwave, and you even have a Glyph um, that will also charge, that will also stun somebody as well. Um, don't know where it is right at this one second, but there's also a glip that stuns somebody as well. So having all of those factors together, you know, seems that there might be a viable kind of stunny build in the future. But for right now, I'm using Juggernaut. Out of the three right here, these are like your self-healing talents. Rage Regeneration is one minute cooldown. It's going to give you 10% health and over five seconds. And then, you know, we know this ability before. Second Wind, it used to be really good in the beta, and then they nerfed it down to 30, you had to be at 35% health or less, and then it would activate this and get 3% health per second. Before, it just came up at like a 10% chance or something like that. It was incredible, like you would not die, and, but it was overpowered. 
So I would be picking that if that were the case, but 35% health, what does that mean? Like why why are we not choosing this one? We're not choosing it because you're at 35% health if you're maybe grinding or something or you're leveling up doing dungeons or you're doing uh, whatever you're doing. If you're 35% health, you're just an execute away from being killed pretty much by another warrior or another class. There's a lot of abilities in Mesa Pandaria that do a lot of damage when you're below X amount of health. And usually it's 20% or lower, so I mean only being 15% away from that, uh, you know, like with Execute it has to be 20% or lower. Um, so that's just cutting it too close and have that regeneration. Plus I like to make this macro right here. This I'll give you a preview on my ma one of the macros that I make. I'll show you right now. I'm still making a lot more. I deleted like 20 of them because I didn't need a lot of them. This one right here I use with the I put Berserker Rage so I can use my Enrage Regeneration for free. Uh, otherwise it costs 60 Rage if you're not enraged. Then I Enrage and cast that and then I also cast Rallying Cry as well. So if I am lower health I'm going to gain 10% health and then another 10% health because of the Rallying Cry and then I'm going to heal over time. It's just really nice defensive cooldown. Um, I believe Rallying Cry gives you 10% health. Uh, 20% so you get like another 30% health yeah so I don't really pay attention to the like the small details like oh you get 5% of this no it's 6% like okay whatever like I generally know what the spell does um, but yeah so that's that that's why I like enrage regeneration it does cost 60 rage without that but you can just macro those together and you're good to go uh, then we have down here these are kind of like your disrupting slowing just kind of piss off your opponent abilities Staggering Shout I think is the least best of all three of these because it's one of those very situational things you need to have hamstring on multiple guys you need to root them maybe something you would do in like your stun spec that you could come up with but as far as a burst spec PBE PBP type thing um, how, Piercing Howl is nice because it can collect mobs together and really help you out um, Disrupting Shout can be really good in PBE but in my opinion, Piercing Howl is just one of those things that you're going to use in more situations. Helps you catch up to mobs like mages or uh, hunters or something that are kiting you and keeps them in range for you. And that does help out a lot. Um, also, you can use it to kite people around too if you need to get your health back up, like say you're in an arena or something like that. Piercing Howl is just a very strong ability, but I can see Disrupting Shout being used in the future. It just has to be used in the right comp and it has to be used like in the right situation. But yeah. Okay, down below, now we have our amazing abilities, the ones that made it pretty much the hardest choice in the world. Bladestorm has been getting nerfed like crazy over the past couple years now. And, our, yeah, it's been out for about a couple years now, I think. came out in BC, right, near the end of it. So, Bladestorm has been getting nerfed like crazy. And now it just doesn't do as much damage. Bladestorm in my opinion is needed more for the mobility of getting out of a snare or something than it is for its damage now um, which is a factor for sure if you're doing PvP right now between 85 and 90 you're not gonna have avatar and avatar helps you with not getting snared now you do still have your trinket and you do still have you know other things as well like charge and leap to get closer to the target but if you get snared the only thing you have to get out of that is your trinket right now or if you're a human the human ability however until you get avatar um, bladestorm could be still a viable thing but then at level 90 I think dragon roar is going to be the best for both PvE and PvP as far as um, just doing damage because in PvE you might go with something like Shockwave to help stun the mobs down, um, but I think just Dragon War is just so nice. You can do so much damage to a bunch of mobs. Let me show you a quick little demonstration on how much damage I can do here with Dragon's Roar. Um, just with the macro that I've made on a couple of these mobs here. Now, I mean, I'm in PvP gear, and the gear is not that great to begin with, but see, I come right here and use my macro to to Colossus Smash as well, and then... There you go. So it's nice. I like that it's a guaranteed crit all the time. Um, definitely really nice. It's not something you have to use when you're recklessness, but it does help. Um, so definitely really cool. And plus it's only a one minute cooldown. I just think it's a really strong ability um, that I feel like is going to be nerfed over time just because of that guaranteed crit 
uh, is a little ridiculous, but ignoring all armor too is kind of crazy as well. I think that's a really good ability, and it's only a minute cooldown, whereas Bladestorm is a minute and 1.5 or 1, 1 minute and 30 seconds. So right there, I feel like the obvious choice is going to be Dragon's Roar at level 90. And until level 90, you might want to go with Bladestorm until you get Avatar at level 90 because you need that mobility. Now dropping down here, we have mass, dis mass Reflection, Safeguard, and Vigilance. We've seen Vigilance before, more of a tanking type thing. Um, and then we have Safeguard. It's pretty much like an intervene. You run speed towards your party member or raid member, removing all um, movement impairing effects upon you, intercepting the next melee or ranged attack against them and reducing the damage taken. I mean, I definitely think that it's pretty nice, but you already have intervene to begin with, and this replaces intervene. Now, I get that it takes away that movement impairing effect on you, but it, I think this is more of a situational thing. If you don't have somebody in your arena comp that can remove a slow a slow effect on you, then maybe safeguard might be something you'd want to have. But to have mass spell reflect, I mean, you, refl you reflect the next spell cast on you on all party and raid members. You get two spell reflects, and not only that, with this here, you can reflect like so much stuff back. You know, someone tries to hex your healer, and someone's trying to fear your, you know, one of your other teammates at the same time. You use this, and boom, you just feared someone, and boom, you just you just got like a double CC off on just a mass reflection. I mean, that's kind of a best case scenario, but still, I think it's really nice. So right now, that's what I'm going with. Um, looking at the glyphs as well here, I'm not going to go through and read every single one here. Um, some of them aren't available yet, like you can't get Blazing Trail right now until higher up in the inscription thing. Um, but I'm going to show you what I'm using for glyphs right here. Glyph of Unending Rage it increases your maximum rage by 20, which is really nice, especially if you're using something like Battle Stance, where you can just really pump out some damage really quickly. It can be used really, really well in a PvE thing, and it's also good in PvP. I mean, having that maximum rage, definitely nice. What is that explosion that keeps happening around me all the time? This is ridiculous. Anyway. <laughs> So over here, now we have Colossus Smash. Now your Colossus Smash also applies Thunder Armor effect to your target. Now you can macro it in already to put to do this, but it's going to cost you an extra 15 rage. And it's very nice and very convenient to have this, um, to do both of these at the same time. So right now, I think that it's pretty nice to have. As far as your other choices go, I mean, Bull Rush can be nice too. Your charge generates more. Um, that's another thing. Um... Horse Voice can be good as well, reduces the cooldown and the rage generation of your battle and commanding shout, so it lets you do it more often, um, could be something to think about as well, and then also Mortal Strike, if you are, you know, in a group or something like that, you know, an arena team or something, like that could definitely be a factor as well. I really don't know why where these explosions are coming from, it's so random, but anyway... Then down below, we have the Minor Glyphs, and these are kind of just cosmetic things. You can pretty much do whatever you want there, but as far as everything goes, to sum everything up, I mean, there's different ways of doing different things for PvP and PvE. Really, t a lot of testing and a lot of working through stuff is really going to help out over time to find out what the optimal specs are. Uh, I might do an episode on Fury in the future, but I plan to also do a macro video and add-ons video in the future for Warrior. And then tomorrow there will be a Rogue video out as well. And a lot of cool changes from the patch have been going on. So, you know, having all these achievements all put together, tons of achievements, tons of, uh, tons of mounts and stuff. I mean, most of my characters are on the Horror, that's why I only have 33 mounts on the Alliance. But... I mean, some pretty decent mounts. I'm going to maybe show off a couple of my mounts here real quickly. So I have the Zulian Tiger, which I love that mount. I like to have just the regular Swift Storm Saber. Got the uh, guild mount for the Golden King, the Lion. Got Swift Zephra, which was in the beginning when... Uh, Refer friend first came out. This was the first mount you would get, and they took it away and they upgraded it. So this is a pretty rare mount. A lot of people don't have this. Um, the flying carpet can't use that, I guess. Oh, that's because I don't have tailoring. Um, so it's on my other character. Fossilized raptor. Got the blue proto drake. It's a hard drop to get. 
Albino Drake, and finally Headless Horseman. Now I'm showing you guys this, and if you want to show off your mounts and show some really rare mounts that you got or some really rare pets that you got, take some screenshots and send me send them into next level diablo3 at gmail.com i know it doesn't have anything to do with world of warcraft it's just an alt email that i have next level d3 at gmail.com i'll put the thing down below you can just send it right there and i'll feature you in an upcoming episode so i hope this did help out with you guys and you know just keep messing around with this stuff and tell me what you like about certain specs and everything but for right now as far as like a pbe slash pbe PBE slash PBP spec. I think that it's best to go with this right now. Arms is really nice. Fury, I've heard some really good things about it. So let me know what you guys think about Fury. If you want to see it in some upcoming episodes, I might be able to do that for you as well. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.